Let's start with your name. Where'd your name come from? Um, my name's Thomas, but everybody just call me Tommy. It's like a little nickname everybody got. And uh, FBC is like the brand that me and like two of my close friends started. So it's Tommy FBC, and the FBC stands for uh, Focus Black Culture. <clears throat> Now, why use your real name? You know, because in hip hop, in rap music, most people use like an alias. Why use your real name? Um, you don't I really don't, see that a lot, by the way. You don't. I just wanted to be original, you know, and I just, when I was thinking of a name, like, I, I couldn't really think of like a gimmick or like something, you know, really catchy to come up with. So I just wanted to just be myself. So I was like, that's the best thing I can be. So, Tommy. <laughs> That's how I got it. Now, where are you from? I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. What's your opinion of the state of rap music right now in Baltimore? Oh, the Baltimore scene right now is really on the come up. There's a lot of talented artists right now in Baltimore. I go to school in California, so I, I wasn't really too hip on the scene to everything that was going on, but I was just recently home, and the Baltimore music scene is seriously taking off right now. Like, we're really on a come up right now. So, you're from Baltimore, but you don't currently live there? No, I live in California. I go to school, live in California. And how long you been in California? For? I've been living in Cali for the last three years, going on four. Okay. And what part of Cali? Uh, I used to live in uh, Oakland, California, for my first three years, and then I lived in, uh, now I live in Orange County. Orange County. Yeah. Okay, got you. All right, um, and then how 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 often do you go back to Baltimore? Uh, the first three years, I probably just went back once or twice a year. Um, I was gone a lot. I was super focused on basketball, so I wasn't really. I was just focused on that. But um, now um, I've been going back pretty often. I say every two three months. I'm always back in the city now. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, could you give us a tour of Baltimore? I would love to. I would love to. Let's talk about the food. Favorite food spot in the city of Baltimore? My favorite food spot in Baltimore? I'd probably have to say Valentino's. And what kind of food is that? Uh, it's just kind of like your typical diner food. You know, they have everything, burgers, fries, uh, spaghetti, all that type of stuff. And what do you order? I mix it up. I probably get the, the cheesesteak or something. I'm a big cheesesteak fan. I love cheesesteaks. Now, what about the nightlife? Favorite strip club in Baltimore? I've never been to a strip club in Baltimore. Oh, honestly, I've never been to a strip club. But I, I've only been to a strip club once with my ex-girlfriend in San Francisco, California. And I have yet to be to a strip club again since then. Why not? Just curious. I don't know. I really don't even know. Like, I've never, the opportunity has never like presented itself again, for real. Which is weird, because a lot of my friends stay in the strip club consistently. But I haven't, I haven't been back in since. Now what about regular nightclubs? Do you have a favorite regular nightclub in Baltimore that you like? A favorite nightclub in Baltimore. I went to, what's the name of that club? It was on 40. Mm. I forgot. There's a club on 40. I went to Dudley's. Dudley's. That was a that was a cool spot. I haven't really been out too much in Baltimore like that, but I, I've been to Dudley's and that was a cool spot. So I know a lot of my friends back home promote and they be having a party thing too. So it's nice. Now we talked about the food a little bit. We talked about the nightlife mm -hmm. or lack thereof because you haven't really <laughs> attended the nightlife like that, but. Yeah. First time somebody visiting Baltimore, uh, any spots you recommend for them to go see or check out while they're in the city? Definitely the Inner Harbor. Uh, you're gonna see a lot in the Inner Harbor. They got the aquarium, they got great food spots. That's like probably the biggest tourist attraction in Baltimore, honestly, to go to. So definitely the Inner Harbor. Now what about the lingo? What are some terms or some phrases one might hear in the city of Baltimore right about now? It's crazy because I don't really got a strong Baltimore accent, but living in California, everybody always says the way I say too. Like, they always be like, yo, say too, say too for me. Man, I be finding it weird because, like, it's so normal, but that's just like in Baltimore, everybody say too a certain way. And I didn't realize that till I left Baltimore. I thought I just thought we said it. So, 
you definitely gonna hear that strong, you know what I'm saying, that two, where you from for real, you're gonna hear all that type of stuff. Now, what about special events? Are there any special events you recommend someone to go visit Baltimore specifically for? Like, for example, in New Orleans, Mardi Gras is like a week-long celebrated situation. Anything you recommend in Baltimore to go check out? Okay. Event-wise. In Baltimore, event-wise. They gonna kill me for this, because they got so many events. Um, event-wise, event-wise. I mean, honestly, summertime at Drew Hill Park, you will catch them boys bring the bikes out. And that's an experience that it's a really good experience for people to have. Because it's just crazy. You just see a whole bunch of people on dirt bikes, you know what I'm saying, just 12 o'clock. And it, like, that's, that's something people should try to see. I'm sure there might be other different events, but that's an event I would recommend. Now, what about your hair? Is there a meaning behind your hair? Nah, no real significant meaning. Um, I just always really wanted locks growing up, and, I, and that's just really why I got them. No real significant meaning. Would you ever consider cutting them? Yeah, I've actually been thinking about that, getting a new look, chopping them off. So, yeah. So you're not married to them? Nah, I'm not, I'm not married to them. All right, let me ask you this. Um, let's take it back a little bit. What type of student were you in school? I've always been a good student. Um, actually, I lied. Um, I was a bad student all the way till middle school, and in high school, my grades got good. I say in high school. And did you say you were you you went to college or mm -hmm. you're going to college in yeah. Uh, California? Yeah. You're still in college. Yeah. What year? I'm a, a junior. Junior. Now let me ask you this. I mean, are you planning on finishing college? Yeah. All right, now, there's obviously different opinions of college. Some people recommend going to college. Some people don't recommend college. Um, you know, obviously, I've talked to people that went to college, and they're not even doing the degree they went to school for and, right. and paid money for or got a scholarship for. But uh, what's your opinion on college for someone thinking about college? And we're talking in the general sense here. So someone thinking about attending college do you advise them or not advise them? What's your take on it? I definitely advise someone to go to college. Um, a degree can do so much for you. So I would definitely advise someone definitely go to college. Try to get a, at least an AA degree, but just try to get something, you know, that you can show these employers. But I feel like people can succeed without college. And me being in college right now, I feel that way often but at the same time I just try to remind myself that this degree can always be something to fall back on so I would definitely advise someone to um, go to college for sure. Now explain what an AA degree is for someone that might not be familiar with that phrase. A is a degree, um, that's a degree you get from a community college, associate's degree and it's just you can get it in communications you know almost you can get in business you know, it's just something, it's not your bachelor's basically, so it's a degree from a community college. So it's your first two years of first college? First two years of college, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. What jobs did you have growing up, if any? <laughs> when I, um, I lived in Mississippi, too, and I used to buff floors at this grocery store called Kroger. It was from, I had to be at work from like 9 to 6 a.m. That was, and that was my first job too. And that was probably the hardest job I've ever worked. I actually haven't worked since that job, so yeah, like that job was crazy. Any crazy customer stories dealing with that job? Man, <laughs> it, it's so crazy. So um, it, it's 24 hours, whatever. So there was a night that I had just, um, I, before I buffed the floor, I like put like I gotta like wet mop it. I gotta like mop it and do a lot of stuff to it. So I had just mopped the floor. So before I can get time to dry mop, like two dudes walk in and really try to act like they just slipped on the floor. Like it, it was it was the it was the lamest. Like they really it didn't it they, <laughs> it was just such a crazy situation because I'm like. They got everything on camera, like, do y'all understand this? But they was really trying to plead their case. So 
that was a funny night because I got away with not really working because I had to address that situation. Like the police had, it was a long story. But at the end of the day, they just rewinded the film and showed them like, y'all crazy for that, man. So if y'all watching that out there, like, that's me. <laughs> I was the one that night. What's the worst thing you put your parents through? Worst thing I put my parents through. Worst thing I put my parents through. I did a lot. I think the worst thing I was my parents do is when I got into a little running with the law. That's probably the only the only thing. Ever. What's your message to the youth? <clears throat> my message to the youth is like you can really do what you want to do. Like me growing up and becoming like of age, <clears throat> I'm starting to really like understand that because I heard it so much growing up, but it never really sunk in. But in this life, like if you just put in the effort and really just put in what it takes, I'm a real believer. Like you can do what you want to do. Like, it's just all about blocking everything out in that tunnel vision and just really focusing on what you want to do. So don't let nobody tell you you can't do nothing. That would be my message right there. Now, let's talk music a little bit. What do you hate the most about the music industry at this point? I hate how much it costs to get in it. <clears throat> it's too expensive. The music industry is too expensive. Explain. I mean, you gotta deal with like fake promotions, fake events. There's always, there's always a hidden scam somewhere. You gotta trust people you never met. You know, it's, it's a whole bunch of gambling to really get into music. I mean, everybody has different routes of trying to get in it, but so far the route that I've been taking is just like, it's been a learning experience, you know. I, I made some good moves, and then I made some, ah, I, should, I shouldn't have did that. So the music industry, man, it is really sneaky. Like, I'm, I'm starting to see a lot of the behind scenes of it. And from just being somebody who used to just listen to music, I never really thought about how deep and how hard it really is to get in the music industry. Like it ain't, it ain't no cakewalk like at all. Have you been scammed before? Yeah, I have been scammed before. I have been scammed before. And what you, you say that again? One time. <coughs> One time. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about how you got scammed? Uh, basically, it was supposed to be like a show, and it was supposed to be opening up for a big artist. I can say it was, but supposed to be opening up for a big artist. So the promoter was getting people to pay. So basically, like, yo, we're going to bring this uh, dude out, and y'all going to open up for him, and y'all just put the money up, blah, blah, blah. So it was cool. But long story short, like, I guess the artist pulled out last minute, and then we were all just left, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's up with our money, you know? And dude, dude almost disappeared. Like, ain't heard from him, seen him. Like, it's crazy. And there's, like, 11 of us, too, that it happened to. So that's just crazy. Now... Was it a fake show where the artist was not going to even perform, period, and they tried to make up the opening situation to, to, you know, take money out of potential openers? Or did the artist really supposedly supposed to really perform and it just so happens that the artist, for whatever reason, pulled out? I mean, we honestly don't know. I, I would hope that the artist really pulled, like, just pulled out. Which I thought was kind of like, I mean, I would, I would expect something like that, like stuff like that might happen. But we were just like, give us our money back because bro didn't show up. There was a nice little crowd too. So it was just like, Oh, you know. so the day of the actual show, mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah. artist didn't come. Yeah, that's how it went down. I see. Yeah. Now, what do you have, what would, what was, what would be your words of advice to somebody, uh, in a similar situation, thinking about opening up, paying to open up to perform in front of a, uh, before a big artist, what's your uh, words of advice to have somebody prevent from being scammed in the future? Do your research. Like, do your research. These hashtags, these Google, whatever you got to do, do your research, man. If it don't look right, if you get a little funny feeling about it, don't do it, bruh. That's my. That's what I would tell them. 
Now in the studio, top three things you need in the studio. Top three things I need in the studio. I need to be quiet. I need weed. What type of strain? Indica. Definitely indica. One more. Not really tripping off the bottle, but I need good vibes. I, I've actually, it's crazy because I've just started doing studio sessions with more people in it, and I don't like that. Like, I, I would rather it just be either me, the engineer, the producer, maybe like one or two of my homies or something like that. I'm not a fan of the hell of people in the studio. Why not? It, it just, it just, I'm, I'm focused in there. I'm not trying to, I mean, socializing is cool, you know, I mean, it's all good. I ain't knocking nobody, but just for me, it can be sometimes distracting to me, you know, because I might be so locked in, in the moment, in the art, and somebody might want to talk about something totally different, you know? So. Craziest studio story, if you have one. Craziest studio story. Let me think. Craziest studio story. It was, um, it was actually open. It was my homeboy's B day, and he ain't even like really. He was not like a celebrate birthdays type of dude or whatever. So it was his birthday or whatever, and uh, I didn't even know. But him and the engineer were so tight that during his birthday, like he had like strippers come. Like we was just all in the session, and like strippers came. Like it was like he had bottles outside, and the session just turned into like a little a little function. So that was a that was a crazy night for real. What's the realest song you ever wrote so far in your whole catalog of music? The realest song I ever wrote, I'd say, is this song called Late Shift. Really dope song. i say that's my realest song out right now. What's that about? It's just about the grind. Like, it's just about, you know, my life really. Like, just, I'm so accustomed to working the late shift. Like, just working all the time, through the night, whatever. So. Risk versus reward. What's the biggest risk you took for your music career so far? Biggest risk I took. <laughs> I took a lot of risk, man. Um, I say I can't say the biggest risk. The second biggest risk. I took so far to get my music career, for my music career. I wasn't a fan of features. Um, this might not be a big risk, but uh, starting off, I was really just set on, I don't, my first mixtape, I just wanted to be all me. Like, nobody else, just all me. And I just wanted to be graded on just all me, you know? So me actually going out and doing features was kind of like something like big, like, bro. What are your keys to success? I'm keys to success. My resilience, I don't give up. You tell me no, I'm gonna ask somebody else. I'm gonna I'm find another way. I'm really, really like laser focused at times. Like when I see the prize, I really go get that. Like. <laughs> That's really why it's brought me through life the way that it has. Like, I make my dreams a reality. Like, that's what I do, try to do my best. So what you got going on right now? Um, right now, uh, I got Walk Through. I made a song called Walk Through. I'm working on getting that on the radio right now. I just did a song with Free Van Tess, um, Up To Something, that's about to drop in the next two weeks. Um, I got my mixtape, TGS, Trapping and Going To School. That's hit the drop July 1st. And um, yeah, man, that's pretty much it for right now. Man. After I dropped the song with Tess, I have another song called Stuntin', Just Me. Man, that's a pretty big song too, so y'all check that out.